highly deceptive and masterful personality and Muhammad Qasim provides us with intricate details about this individual. Qasim says the Jal height is about 6 feet and 1 or 2 inches. He has a cruel face with dark brown skin. He is clean shaved and bears a mole on his cheek. The Jal has slightly curly dark hairs and he bears close resemblance to a typical South Asian or Middle Eastern man. The Jal has a muscular build and when I saw him I didn't see any of his eyes bulging out rather they were normal. I don't know if he is blind in one of his eyes however he does have the ability to shape chip therefore he can take on any appearance he desires and uses this ability to appear in a pleasant form to seduce the masses. When the Jal walk he strides with a lot of pride and it feels like no one can approach or stand in front of him. Even those who may seem to have unshakable resolve will fall victim to this deception. In my dream, I have heard Iblis addresses the Dajjal as my rich warlord. As the popularity of Muhammad Qasim is surging, on the other hand, people have doubts and some are completely against it. Some individuals have questions while others are raising questions outright. Let's seek answers from the individual who has supported supported Muhammad Qasim's notion from the very early days. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you Saad? Alhamdulillah, how are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm good too. Thank you very much. This episode is gonna be about the Dajjal mainly, right? But I'm gonna link the Dajjal to whatever Muhammad Qasim has said recently or previously in his videos or whichever way and even you have said some things about the job i'm going to be asking a few uh questions about the job uh, it would be good if you uh, just uh introduce your audience uh with muhammad qasim is yes. the people who have not heard about muhammad qasim before so just in a sentence muhammad qasim bin abdul kareem he's born in lahore pakistan he's 47 alhamdulillah and he's seen divine dreams from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam comes in his dreams too and he's been seeing for the past maybe 25 or so years he's been seeing dreams divine dreams and he's been sharing all of these dreams online we are going to discuss about those dreams and i i, I have a few questions we uh, that i'm gonna ask uh, abbas nasir because abbas nasir is the one who called muhammad qasim as the awaited imam mahdi uh, he's gonna be the future imam mahdi so yeah so it's this this episode is, episode is gonna be about the jaw wonderful but uh, let me uh, again like clarify the sentence you said that uh, Avest to say that's me. Uh, I think that uh, Muhammad Qasim will be Imam al Mahdi near future, and uh, this has been backed by uh, authentic ahadith and what we have learned from Quran and Sunnah. Uh, so I just wanted to clarify. Thank you very much for that, for clarifying the stance. So we're gonna start with the with the first question right away. So uh, basically, I've seen one of your recent videos where you and um, you know your colleagues were talking about the Jal and um, a dream that Muhammad Qasim saw recently and the question goes as recently I read your explanation about the Dajjal where Allah chooses two people out of those two people Allah selects one to be Mahmati and the other one to be Dajjal however what now my question comes in that however what if Muhammad Qasim bin Abdul Karim is the Dajjal and the one you refer to as the Dajjal is actually Mahmati such questions actually are very interesting when you want to engage yourself too much in logic. But in every such scenario, you have no other way but to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have to find the answers uh, through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because when we do any of these discussions, our basic belief, our basic understanding and our shake hand is that uh, we are Muslims and we believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So everything has to come through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In response to what you have said, there is a very interesting thing that very easily clarifies this. What was the thing that made the people of Mecca believe that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the prophet of Allah? You would say, uh, okay, Quran says that. Quran was revealed on Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So how would you think that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam speaking truth? However, the way you come about this, you would have something that's called instinct. You would have to believe on your instinct and you have that's called iman. You believe in ghaib. You be believe in the invisible. You believe in something that you cannot see and touch and feel from your five senses. That is iman and that is 
your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all the people who believe even now and at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam believed that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the prophet of Allah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala induced that iman in their hearts and then they knew from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is the true prophet and eventually he came true. So our target audience is Muslims. And all of the Muslims know from Quran and Sunnah that there will be a person, the awaited one, Imam al-Mahdi. He will lead the Ummah out of darkness into light and progress and everything. So that would be the first thing, the instinct and your prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. There are two things. There are two things I'll, I, I'll like to finish. First is instinct and that instinct has to be supported by uh, your your prayers, your prostration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the guidance. That's the very first and very basic thing. Second thing is th you would find a few signals. What is this person inviting to? There is a very basic thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught Muhammad Qasim that most of the people in this time are ignoring and that is shirk. That you have to avoid all forms of shirk and he is taught what is shirk. This is such a solid point that the Jal cannot invite you to. The Jal cannot tell you to avoid shirk. Whoever is asking you to avoid the modern forms of shirk and is not doing takfir of others like some groups have done in the past. He is being inclusive, allowing, inviting everyone, even the non-Muslims, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to believe in oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to believe in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and to avoid all forms of shirk. This is something Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, King David, King Solomon, and so on, alayhi wa salatu wa salam. So this is very solid. These are two basic things. Uh, we know this hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the Jal. Allah's apostle delivered a sermon and said, all prophets warn their nations about the Dajjal. He is blind in his left eye. His right eye has a thick pellicle and the word kafir is written between his two eyes. And when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam clearly mentions how the Dajjal is going to be, why does Muhammad Qasim say that he will have both eyes and he don't see any defect in them? Does this not contradict with the Hadith? Dreams most of the times are symbolic as well. Uh, you cannot always say that when you are seeing a dream, you are watching demonstration of what would happen in real life. For example, if you see tooth falling, somebody sees a tooth of theirs falling, it does not mean that when they wake up, their tooth would fall. It's symbolic and it would mean something based on the scenarios and personality of that person and so on and so forth. Only the person expert in telling the meanings of the dream would be able to tell that. So there could be two perspectives. One could be that Muhammad Qasim saw a symbolic dream. He is being shown a jal antichrist in a form that is powerful, that is uh, that is scary, and that is something to be very careful about. That could be one reason he he has seen the jal like this. Second thing could be that maybe initially the jal would be like that, and eventually something would happen to his eye, and he would become blind in one eye. That could be second thing. And the third thing could be that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam could be telling something symbolically. The word kafara written on his forehead most probably does not mean it would be written and that it could be something very symbolic that he it would be obvious that he is a kafir he is he is opposing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but people would still obey him and accept him as uh, God knows so if that is symbolic there is some chances that a thing about I could be symbolic as well probably he is not able to see the uh, spiritual side of the things and he's able to see the material sides of the thing so possibly he is uh, blind in that sense so we would only know when the jal in reality comes uh, then we would know if Muhammad Qasim's dream was symbolic or Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was telling us something symbolically so we could understand in this time and age because 1400 plus years had to pass and he had to tell us something that we could understand in this time and age after all that Correct, correct. Also, there's another thing about this hadith that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said that Kafara will be written on between his eyes, on his forehead, right? And he also said that even unlettered people will be able, if they have Iman, they will be able to read it. If somebody right. cannot read, how can they read Kafara on, on the forehead? That means it has to be symbolic, ah. right? Symbolic. The people have to have Iman to see this guy is clearly a kuf. Kufr, a kafir. Right. That's what he meant. Right. Or maybe Allah Alam, Allah knows better. But seeing it, it doesn't seem like kafara will be written on his forehead. Or maybe it can be, but 
it, it looks like it looks like that um i'm gonna move to where the last question that i have but it's from one of the the comments in the video that i saw and uh, one of the uh, comments says that that the dal will not be able to enter makkah and medina as mentioned in the hadith but muhammad qasim bin abdul kareem claimed that he will be born there can you explain uh, i'm not sure if muhammad qasim said uh, the dal would be born in makkah or medina i'm not sure about that he does say that the dal was born in the land of arab but i'm not sure about uh, makkah or medina also the dal when he becomes the dal would not be able to enter medina but before that when he is not the dal when he is a normal person initially the dal would be a muslim as well a pious person as well but eventually he would become evil and uh, he would start doing black magic or all sorts of evil things or involving himself in satanism after that when he is the jal or uh, my understanding about that hadith is that he comes out as the jal claiming himself as god then he will not be able to enter the nat al-mulawa and it does yes definitely does make sense as well because in one of the hadiths it's also said that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so the jal um doing tawaf around the kaaba exactly as uh, Uh, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam behind him you know so in one hadith Nabi Nabi Pa sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that the dajjal won't be able to enter and in the other hadith Nabi Pa sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that so that can make sense uh, also uh, about Ibn uh, Ibn Sayyad that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam doubted uh, that he could be the dajjal was in Medina and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was in Medina so they knew that he has not become the dajjal he could be future the jal he doubted him to be future the jal so it is also very obvious from that now you that jal when he comes in power and comes out as the false god then he will not be able to enter uh, medina wallahu a'lam that does make sense thank you very much i only had these three questions and i would ask uh, the audience to uh, ask anything below in the comment section if you have any questions regarding muhammad qasim or regarding anything to do with end of times if you differ from our view you can definitely ask in the comments below and we'll be uh, asking those questions to avas nasir in the future inshallah and avas thank you very much for being uh, thank you jazakallah jazakallah i hope this goes well We have started this new series, so we invite everyone to start watching this series. Hopefully, we will be able to do it every uh, week. We will announce proper schedule once it gets a bit smooth, inshallah. We are very hopeful that it will be very, 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 very beneficial for the English audience from all over the world and Muslims. The Muslim Ummah will take benefit from this discussion. Inshallah. And may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala give us sincerity and purity in our intentions. Amin, Amin, Sum Amin. Jazakallah khair, Abbas, and thank you very much, the audience, brothers and sisters, and the elderly too. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Assalamualaikum.